Okay, this is the last section in the complex numbers chapter uh, in the core year two book, and we're looking at solving geometric problems. You'll remember we talked about the roots of unity and how they form a geometric pattern. So, for example, if I were to draw an Argand diagram and draw the, the roots of, let's say, the uh, all fruits of unity, the first root would be there, would be one, um, second root would be here, which we'd call omega, third root here, which would be omega squared, fourth root here, that would be omega cubed, and um, yeah, it forms this geometric pattern, but you find like the first root is here it lays on the axis there on the real axis and the first root is always one yeah that's with roots of unity yeah the more roots you have basically the more sides that regular um, polygon is going to have but the rule also applies to any complex number now here on, on this diagram you'll see that the first root isn't one it's off here somewhere yeah so it's not on the axis like the roots of unity um, but they do carry on and they form this ge geometric pattern you've got your third root so on uh, yeah going all the way around now you, you could almost think of it as right if you were just to rotate this back down there you would get roots of unity, wouldn't you, if you sort of rotated that whole hexagon round so that um, this was on the real axis, you've got the roots of unity. And we can actually use the roots of unity to find the uh, roots um, of any complex number. Now let's have a look at this bit down the bottom. If Z1 is one root of this equation, so Z1, is the root of a complex number that's not one. And these are the nth roots of unity. Okay, so this is how we would write down the roots of unity here. Okay, so these are the roots of what you get when you solve this equation. Yeah, when you solve z to the power n equals one. So they're the nth roots of unity and I'm going to show you in a minute how we can easily write work those out without solving equations. Then the roots of um, basically a slightly different equation. So where this isn't one is not one. Yeah, so it can be any complex number. Then actually we can get the roots of it by doing this. Okay, so basically, let's write it down like this. So we've got the roots of unity. First one is 1, then omega, then omega squared, then omega cubed, and so on. Okay, we want the roots of um, a different complex number, not 1. And let's call this complex number s now what we do is we take the roots of unity and if we multiply them by our complex number z1 yeah so we've got an equation which is um we're, we're trying to solve a uh, uh, an equation where it's equal to a complex number which we'll call z1 then we multiply the roots of unity by z1 and we'll get the roots of our different complex equation and so on now how do we know what these roots of unity are we can We'll get Z1 from the question, but what are the roots of unity? Well, the first one is always 1. That's easy. Now, to find the other uh, roots of unity, this is important. This is going to be really useful. 
omega, the first root, is always equal to e to the power i 2 pi over m. Okay, so that's the first, well, basically the second root of unity. So the first root is 1. The second root is going to be this. Now n is just basically the, um, comes from this, the z to the power n. So that's where the n comes from. And then if you want to find the other roots, well, then if you square it, okay, you'll find the third root. Now, when you square um, an exponential, so over n, when you square that, well, what do you do? You just times the power by 2. So omega squared is just going to be e to the i 4 pi over m yeah if you want to find the next root then you'll cube your original one which basically means multiplying the power by 3 yeah so i'm going to say this is going to be really useful if you can remember this as the basically the the second root of unity the first root of unity is going to be one then it makes doing these types of questions quite easy. Okay, so here we have um, a point on a vertex, vertex of an equilateral triangle. So equilateral triangle is telling me something about three roots. So I'm going to be thinking of something like z cubed. The center of the triangle is at the origin. Find the coordinates of the other vertices of the triangle and then find the area. So I'm going to start with a diagram. The diagram is going to help me out. So um, I'm going root three across and one up. Okay, so here's one vertex of the triangle. And that vertex as a complex number is going to be uh, root 3 plus i. Yeah, so we're just writing the coordinate as a complex number. So we've got that uh, point there. So we want to find out what the other um, coordinates are. So to do it, we're going to start with uh, the roots of unity. In fact, the cube roots of unity. So the cube roots of un unity are going to be 1 is the first one. Now, remember what I said about using this and what up here. This um, e to the power i 2 pi over n. Right, so the first n, in this case, n is 3 because we're looking at the cube root. So the second root of unity is just going to be what I've written up there, i 2 pi over 3. Now to find the next root of unity, I need to take what I've just written here and I need to square it. Now if I square this, I basically multiply the power by 2. So the next root of unity is going to be e i 4 pi over 3. So now I have the roots of unity. If I want to turn them into the roots of, of what I've got here, remember I multiply the first root by the roots that I've got here. So to do that, we need to write this in exponential form. Yeah. And then it's easy going to it's going to be easy to multiply an exponential by an exponential. So to do that, I need r, and I need the argument of it. Now r is just going to be the square root of root three uh, squared plus one squared, which is going to be two. I'll do that in my head, and then to find the argument. So I need to find this angle here. It's going to be positive. I need to do arctan or tan inverse of 
uh, 1 over root 3. So 1 divided by root 3, and I get pi over 6. So let's write that down, pi over 6. So I need to multiply the roots of unity by the first root here, which is going to be 2e to the i pi over 6. Right, so the first one is going to be 2, because you're just multiplying 1 by that, 2e to the i pi over 6. The next root, well, because we're multiplying the same thing, all we need to do is to add the powers. So we've got basically 2 pi over 3, and we're adding pi over 6. So that gives us 5 pi over 6. So i, 5 pi over 6. And then the third root, 2e. And again, if we add the powers, we've got 4 pi over 3. And we're adding pi over 6. And that will give us 3 over 2. So i, 3 pi over 2. So we're going to convert now these roots into complex numbers, a plus ib, which then makes it easy then to see what the coordinates are. So um, first one, let's do it over here, 2e to the i pi over 6. Well, that's 2 cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. And you can just multiply the brackets and work that out. Second one, i pi over 5 pi over 6. I pi over 6 plus I sine 5 pi over 6. Last one, 2 E, I 3 pi over 2. 2 cos 3 pi over 2 plus I sine 3 pi over 2. I suppose, strictly speaking, I should have changed this argument, taken away 2 pi from it, um, but I'm still going to get the same answer regardless. So in this case, it doesn't really make a difference. It's in the wrong format, but it will still give us the right answer. So the first one. So if I work out cos of pi over 6, pi over 6, times that by 2, I get root 3, so root 3, then for the i part, the sine of uh, pi over 6, sine pi over 6, is a half, times that by 2, so I'll get root 3 plus 1, which is the coordinate we've already got, plus 1 plus i, for the second one, the cosine of 5 pi over 6. Um, that's going to give me minus root 3 over 2 times that by 2. So negative root 3. Uh, the cos of 5 pi over 6. Sorry, the sine of 5 pi over 6. Sine uh, 5 pi over 6 is a half um, times that by. Two, so we also get i there. So we found the other one. Seems like it's just a reflection of the first one and the last one. Cos of three pi over two is zero. So it's just, just going to be zero. And the sine of three pi over two, three pi over two is negative one. Uh, times that by 2 gives you negative 2, so negative 2i. So time for a diagram. So we can see what all of these look like. 
so we got one over here that was the original one root 3 1 uh, negative root 3 1 so we got one over here negative root 3 1 and then we got one down here which goes down to negative 2 okay so we found the coordinates of um, the other vertices here in part B it says that we need to find the area of that triangle so we'll join up the ends to make our triangle like that this is easy enough we've done the hard bit so the base of this triangle from there to there well it's going from root 3 on this side to root 3 on that side so it's a total distance of 2 root 3 from that way to that way then the height of the triangle going from there to there well it goes from 1 at the top to mi minus 2 at the bottom so that's 3 so the area part B is going to be half base times height half base times the height and if we work that out the exact value is 3 root 3 okay so the trick to doing this question was um, using this here to write the roots of unity multiplying each of those roots of unity by the uh, first root that we know that will give us the roots of the other roots of um, the equation that generated that root and in this particular case once we've got those um, uh, those points we were able to work out the area of the triangle okay so you should now be in a position where you can do exercise 1g on pages 26 to 27